Good evening everyone and welcome to a shortened version of an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update tonight, the 11th of March 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo. Tonight we'll be just looking at the future track of X Jillian and X Haiti, and then we'll be looking at the longer term potential of both of those systems, or possibly a new system forming and coming towards the coast. We'll also have a quick look at the MJO and the week's coming up rainfall. X-Cyclone Haiti started looking very ordinary from about 4am uh, this morning and just continued to weaken. I was very surprised that the Bureau kept it a tropical cyclone at 10 in the morning. Given some of the satellite imagery available, it was really starting to be sheared away at that point in time. But look, overall now it has weakened. It has remained fairly stationary, moving or drifting more than moving just to the northwest or even the north. It's expected to now move to the northeast, expected to weaken further over the next couple of days, and then eventually head it back out towards the Solomon Islands, in which case, when it does so, there is just the chance, if it remains a low, and if it hasn't just washed out into a trough system, there remains just the chance that it might redevelop, and we'll go through some of the longer term guidance on that shortly, but... Overall, folks, that's all she wrote for Haiti, um, unless it decides to uh, at least maintain some structure when it gets to the Solomons later on in the week or over the weekend. You can see here, it, it was pretty well a nightmare to track, and the reason it was a nightmare to track was because it was so low and the steering environment was so weak. It still is a little bit weak, although it will strengthen uh, shortly. But look, when they're, this, when they're this weak, it really doesn't matter what they do, because even if they hit the coast, uh, the only thing you're going to get is a lot of rain. So, in the end, this was a bit of a non-event for Queensland. There was some pretty good rainfall reported around the Mackay region. They got uh, between 50 and 100 millimetres over a lot of places. The other issue that it has done, and this is a negative, is it stopped a lot of the rain from forming on the east Queensland coast around Cairns to Cooktown, even though they've had pretty decent falls today because the system has sheared away and, and weakened considerably. It has limited the amount of southeasterlies that could push through into the north tropical coastline and because of that it has limited the potential for rainfall so we should have been seeing given the current setup with X Jillian out in the Gulf uh, or in the West Peninsula we should be seeing falls of two to four hundred millimetres over 24 hours in the Cairns to Cooktown district instead we're looking at falls more in the 50 to 150 millimetres which is still good rain don't get me wrong but it's not the sort of rain you would expect from this type of event all because Haiti is stuffing that up for everyone. There is a still a cyclone watch for ex-cyclone Gillian. Gillian is now still located over the peninsula coastline or in just inland of the peninsula coastline. It's really moving, same thing as Haiti, just really moving nowhere. It is expected to, now that it's weak, it's expected to drift towards the west or move towards the west in response to a developing ridge. Uh, and then once it gets a little bit of height about it, it may move a little bit further to the north. Look, it's still going to be under a lot of wind shear throughout this period. None of the guidance is really developing this into a significant system. The GFS guidance probably develops it into the most significant, a Cat 2, and hits the southern, uh, southern coastline here. We'll go through some of the model guidance for this one. So if we look at the five-day guidance from the UK Met, overall the track basically drifts westwards and the system doesn't redevelop really into anything significant at all. It stays fairly weak, uh, borderline category one if we're lucky, um, but really just sort of remains in the central Gulf of Carpentaria and then eventually pushes back to the north here. In which case we do see potential increasing in, in about a week's time if it remains over the Arafura Sea that it could just form into something a bit more significant in the longer term. But same thing as Haiti, it really needs to maintain at least some semblance of a low pressure system and not just wash out as part of the monsoon trough uh, if it's going to do that. The Canadian model all over the shop, but overall the Canadian model is tipping now a westerly motion. Last night it was tipping all sorts of motions all the way from PNG all the way to southeast Queensland. At least today it's showing you something, something that resembles a reasonable track confidence in the forecast. Sorry, a reasonable forecast confidence in the track. And the GFS, this is the one model that does want to spin this up into something a bit more significant, into a Cat 1 or 2 as it hits the coast in the southern gulf and then pushes northwestwards. So the GFS is the outlying model in all of this schmozzle. Uh, it does tip this uh, system to redevelop into a cyclone, hit the coast, and then possibly even redevelop again and hit the coast up here towards Gove. But uh, that, that, as I said, is an outlying model solution. So if we look at the European track forecast, we see the system right here and we see that the system will drift towards the west over the next few hours and should be lying by tomorrow morning out here over the Gulf, starting to produce gales to its south. Remember, the reason it's pushing west is because it's located... Uh, 
over the top of or north of a subtropical ridge. So we're getting these southeasterly winds that are going to try and push the system in a westerly direction in the lower to mid levels. And so that's why the system's pushing west. Also what that does though is it causes an increase in the pressure gradient here. And that's why we see those gale force, that orange, orange level, which is 28 to 35 knot winds to its south, but not so much to its north. And if we continue on that track as we head to Wednesday night, we see the system does not deepen significantly and if we have a look why that could be uh, we have a look at wind shear values in the region at that time we see there's the center of our circulation they're not too bad they're moderate they're about 20 knots of wind shear or 15 to 20 knots of wind shear so wind shear isn't that much of a problem in the uh, in the Gulf of Carpentaria although while it's not going to allow it to develop very rapidly it is going to it is going to allow at least some development unlike in the Coral Sea so what we do have though is a little bit of drier mid-level air out here to the north and what we also get is because we've got a southeasterly flow pushing through we're going to see some drier air inserted into the Gulf of Carpentaria from the south and as we head to day three we can see that drier air pushing right up here into the western Gulf of Carpentaria and we see that wind shear at the time remains fairly low in fact actually gets a little bit lower but the big issue I guess is dry air in the system and what the G what the ECMWF model does by Friday is because of that drop in wind shear um, we see the system continuing to produce gales to its south but it's touch and go as to whether this redevelops into a tropical cyclone as it heads in a northwesterly direction as we head to day four we continue to track it and by day four, it encounters those favorable conditions and makes landfall out here in the northeastern parts of the territory as a weak tropical cyclone. It does tighten up. It is a fairly small system and therefore is going to react very quickly to conditions around it. So you can see here that over that period between day three and day four, even though we do have this dry air pushing up into the territory, it doesn't quite wrap around the system. And so that allows the system to track in a northwesterly direction. And also, if we look at wind shear value, as the system tries to tighten up we actually see very very low levels of wind shear so we do see conditions generally improving for the system over the next couple of days uh, probably not so much tomorrow but definitely is starting to improve late in the week Thursday and Friday as for Haiti on Thursday we see that Haiti continues to push basically from her position or his position here out to the northeast and we do see gales possibly developing to the north of the system uh, but overall the system looks more like a trough related system here as opposed to a closed circulation by Thursday morning but despite that it is in some favorable shear conditions later on in the week so Thursday we're seeing wind shear out here in the Coral Sea very low look this has been the big issue with this system the past uh, the past week since it was first forming over the Solomon Sea and pushing southwestwards it really was struggling against wind shear and look the forecast for wind shear isn't too bad the issue I guess as it heads northeast is the amount of dry air in the Coral Sea there's a lot of dry air pushing up remembering that the Coral Sea is going to see some fairly decent ridging so southeasterly trade winds coming up into the coast here and that's pushing a fair bit of dry and stable air in the lower to mid levels so because of that we're seeing the system will probably struggle to get itself going but look overall atmospheric conditions in terms of its shear or shear values between the one and a half to seven kilometers up in the atmosphere they're pretty good and that was its major limiting factor it's just a matter of can it stay away from this dry air and we could actually see it reform into a TC if it can maintain some low-level structure at the moment that's not looking real flash because at even already the system is exposed as we head to day three the euro does not want a bar of it it just forms it into a trough system and basically from there it just dies uh, as it pushes or continues pushing towards the east towards uh, Vanuatu and there it is there, very much a trough related low, uh, very broad system, not really tight. So the Euro is not interested. Let's have a look at what the GFS decides to do with it. So at day four, the GFS has the system a little bit further to the south than the Euro does. And as we head to day five, we have the system remaining stationary here on day five. As we head to day six, starts to drift back towards the west. And then by day seven, it starts to re-intensify under low shear and good humidity conditions, as well as some pretty good upper outflow as well in the system in the upper level. So 
Folks, in the, the, the key component here is the GFS maintains its structure in the lower levels. The European drops its structure in the lower levels and forms a trough system. So if the GFS comes through, now the GFS is over-enthusiastic in spinning up tropical lows and cyclones, so just be aware of that and factor that into uh, what we're showing you here. But you can see here that the GFS does keep this as a low and then therefore conditions finally start to improve for it as we head towards the weekend and into early next week. And from there, the system is basically going to catch a ride on a ridge and push to the west. And if we just go out there just for just for a bit of a laugh, uh, we go out to a little bit too far for the model to be accurate. But just to show you, the system basically just drifts towards, or, or doesn't drift, it actually moves fairly rapidly towards the west on days eight and nine you can see here continues to intensify and as we head to day 10 the model gets a little bit confused then so don't pay too much attention to exactly its position here but you can see here that the gfs does push it towards the coast remembering of course that this is only one type one model and if we have a look at the ensembles to see what they do with it so by day eight we see a considerable model spread there of the system by the pushing back towards the coast being weak and located out here towards uh, Vanuatu or possibly even pushing further to the southeast and not posing a threat at all to anyone. Um, as we head to day 10 though we see that whatever happens it gets deeper so whether it gets it pushes towards the coast uh, or whether it pushes uh, remains fairly stationary here in the Vanuatu region or whether it pushes southeast whatever it does it deepens no matter what happens there so that's I guess a key component it's just a matter of we don't know where it's going to go at the time. If we look at the Western Australian region and we have another tropical lower tropical cyclone in this area. Now that is the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Gillian pushing in a westerly direction. Now at that point in time, we expect a fairly strong ridge around the centre part of Australia and the western part of Australia. So that strong ridge uh, possibly will extend as far west so uh, as, as this region here. So really the component of movement will either be from there to there. Now that is a dramatic difference because if we get this component of movement, obviously we're starting to talk the pon potential of a landfall in Western Australia. If we get this component of movement, it's going to pass harmlessly way out here to the west. So there's a fairly large error here in the potential movement by about day 9 or 10 if a system develops out here. Now conditions aren't going to be too favourable. They're going to be okay, but they're not going to be something that we can look ahead uh, 10 days ahead and go, yep, we're definitely going to see a cyclone there. They are going to look okay, but not a definite done deal. As we head to day 8 on the Euro, we can see the Euro, similar sort of area here. It's developing something out here in the Southeast Indian Ocean, and it's also developing something out here in the, uh, in the Vanuatu region or Fiji region. Day 9, we start to see an increase in variability here, and all the way out to here. So we do see a general westerly movement there on day 9 in the European ensemble as well. And by day 10, the Euro is pretty intent on keeping that ridge over central Australia and really pushing whatever low or cyclone happens out here further to the west and most of the model members miss the coast with it so whatever is happening out here continues pushing to the west there are just some outliers though if i just take that line out there are just some outliers just in here near the coast of onslow to exmouth so that might need to be watched in the uh, longer term so around about day nine to day 12 we might need to watch that area just in case there might be a sharp recurve of the system back in that direction um, over the eastern part of the continent we continue to see a track generally to the west of the uh, tropical low or cyclone that might be located in this area. It's just a matter of by this stage it's already around about 20 degrees south and it's very difficult for a system this late in the season to push west from 20 degrees south for over a thousand or two thousand k's. So uh, while we've got a fairly strong ridge here in the Tasman and around New Zealand it's going to be pretty pretty difficult for a system this low in alt or sorry this high in latitude to continue to push west indefinitely and and make it to the Queensland coast. So that's the dilemma faced by any system this far south this late in the season. So it's a wait and see approach, uh, but really we, we've got some pretty good guidance that there's going to be a new low out here, or it could even be the remnants, as I said, of ex-tropical cyclone Haiti that could be uh, out here and starting to push back towards the west on days 8 to 10. So tomorrow's rainfall, we're going to continue seeing some pretty decent showers around Cairns northwards in response to the tropical low or ex-cyclone Gillian here as he pushes, as she pushes to the west. 
Um, we're going to see a lot of rainfall probably just off the coast, but also on the West Peninsula coastline, it should be hitting the coast of uh, associated with Exgillian. You can see here ex Haiti pushing northeastwards, taking all the rain away with it in the Coral Sea. As we head to Thursday, we continue to see Gillian stuffing around in the Gulf there and some rain getting onto the coast, but most of it remains in the Gulf itself, which is useless for everyone. On Friday, we see the system pushing, uh, expected to push a little bit further to the north. We see the fact that Ex Haiti is now well and truly out of the picture. We see the potential now for some onshore showers over the Queensland coastline in the wet tropics. We continue to see isolated shower and storm activity over the top end and the North Kimberley. And as we head to Saturday, we start to see ex Gillian expected to push towards the northeastern parts of the territory. So we might actually start to see some of that rain hitting the coastline, which is finally fantastic. Um, and that rain will slowly spread westwards in this scenario. But remember, the track forecast for ex Gillian is very much up in the air at the moment. It's very random depending on which model you follow. Generally, a track towards the west or west-southwest followed by a track towards the north or northwest is the expected outcome. The good news for those of you on the top end part of the territory, you're going to see a increase of rainfall again in the four to eight day period. So once that low ex Gillian pushes that way, uh, you'll start to see a flow that will bring in a lot of moisture and a lot more rainfall and a lot more scattered shower and storm activity over the top end of the territory. The top of the Cape should continue to see some pretty decent rainfall fa falling there in the monsoon trough and most of Queensland remains dry, most of Northern Territory outside the top end remains dry and we could be seeing an increase in shower and storm activity over the Gascoyne region and parts of the Kimberley on, in that four to eight day period as well. The MJO forecast for the next fortnight is not a good one. This is from the European Ensemble. We can see that it's now in phase eight. It's about to get to phase one. This means very, very low rainfalls for Australia. When it's in phase eight, one, two, and even three, it's, it usually heralds very low rainfall potential and a very low uh, or lower than normal cyclone potential. But the good news is there, it is starting to re-increase there in phase two. And hopefully if that progresses eastwards, we may get one last burst. It's touch and go. We may get one last burst in April. Uh, but by that stage, it's usually too late to see a big uh, monsoon burst in April. But we may actually see an increase in cyclone chances sometime in April if that MJO can re-intensify and push eastwards. Looking at some other tropical waves, because the MJO isn't the only uh, factor when it comes to the development of convective activity during our wet season, the Kelvin wave is another thing that we monitor. And if we look at the Kelvin wave uh, coming across the Indian Ocean, right in here in day two, it's starting to push towards the southeast Indian Ocean. Now, what we're looking at possibly happening is as the tropical low ex Gillian pushes westwards, the Kelvin wave pushes eastwards. Those two systems, uh, or, or that wave, may actually ignite a little bit of a, a little bit of development in that tropical low or tropical cyclone as it pushes eastwards. But once again, X cyclone Gillian has to play ball and has to remain a feature at the surface. If it doesn't, then that's not going to happen. The issue going against X cyclone Haiti for when it when it eventually decides to, to tell us what it's going to do in a few days time is that along the southwest Pacific, we're actually seeing a uh, a decrease in convective potential because of a Rossby wave. Now the Rossby wave pushing westwards here is going to eventually lie over the Coral Sea in days four to nine. And because of that, that's around about the same time we expect whatever's starting to happen in the Southwest Pacific to push west. So that's not a good sign for the potential development of that system. And it's probably because of those things that the Euro Ensemble is not as bullish as the GFS Ensemble um, in developing a cyclone as it pushes back towards the west towards Australia. But uh, look, folks, this uh, once again, these don't always follow the plan. So these are forecasts, so they can vary. But uh, usually the next few days are pretty well forecast when it comes to these gravity waves pushing westward. So the orange here suggests bad conditions for convection. The blue suggests good conditions for convection. So there you go, folks. It's not just the MJO we look at. It's all these other factors as well that impact on cyclone potential and convective or rainfall potential as well. All right, thanks for watching tonight. I said short. I always get carried away. I'm sorry, but uh, this stuff I find very interesting, so I hope you guys do too. Thanks for watching tonight. We'll have another update tomorrow night. Good night.